the space race lifts off for the second time this season as we make our way to Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida, as we get set for the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash. Welcome in. I'm Josh Toll, and with me is former Canadian international Kaylin Kyle. And Kaylin, you look at these two teams. Well, one player you look at first for the Orlando Pride is Ashton Harris, the keeper. Now leads the NWSL in all-time saves with 469. I've been saying it since game one of the season, and I've been very vocal about Ashlyn Harris of just what not only what she adds on her play to the pitch, but off the pitch. She is a wall between the pipes and a fantastic mother. I honestly don't know how she juggles at all, but I love seeing her have that all-time leading. And a player that she's going to try to slow down tonight, Rachel Daly, who since 2017 has led the dash in scoring. And Rachel Daly is just one of those players that you hate to play against, but you want her on your team because she is aggressive. She gets stuck into challenges and she is a force to be reckoned with in and around this 18 yard box and she takes no crap it's a player that you love to watch and now we'll take a look at our starting 11 and first we'll begin with james clarkson and the houston dash and three changes to this lineup coming off that one nil loss to ol rain spencer comes into this left hand side i love this change i think he needed it to add a little bit more balance obviously the nine times out of ten the attack comes down this right hand side with nichelle prince also coming in at hansen comes in over oyster they struggled defensively trying to put all those players into this back line. So again, gives them a little bit more of a balance and Schmidt finds herself on the bench and groom in the starting 11. And then you look at the other side for Becky Burley. This will be her starting 11 tonight against Houston. And just one change uh, in this side, obviously. Presley finds herself on the bench and Turner comes back into this lineup. But it's this midfield. It's really starting to project and getting that ball from this back line up into these front running players. You look at Tim Rack that's come alive with Orlando and finding herself in the starting 11. Jody Taylor since coming over has been electric and then Sydney LaRue. I don't even have to say anything about this player. She's absolutely fantastic to watch and is having herself a season. Seven goals on the season for Sydney LaRue, which now is second best in the NWCL, trailing only Bethany Balser. Three more points on the line here in the NWCL. Just moments away from opening kick between the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash. Welcome back as we are moments away from the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash taking on one another for the second time this season in the first meeting between these two. Houston winning by a score of 2-1, to one, a goal by Maria Sanchez for the Houston Dash in what was her final game after being on loan from Tigres in La Liga MX. And then also scoring for Houston that game was Veronica Latsko for Orlando. The only goal in it was Gunny Janstutter. But that was plenty earlier in the season. Now a much different looking squad in terms of who's in charge for Orlando as Becky Burley gets her first look against this Houston Dash side. And I think if you look at this Orlando side and just like you alluded to, the pieces starting to come together. Tim Rack getting herself into the starting 11. That back line just a, a little bit more tough to break down. And then Ashlyn Harris just breaking records all over the map. Sydney LaRue back on her scoring ways where she started the season. So it's going to take a team performance. And you can tell just how happy these players are underneath Becky Burley. A lot of them have been vocally about it that it's nice to have a coach implemented that cares about us, cares about winning, and cares about the organization. A lot looser group under Becky Burley than they were under Mark Skinner, who's now with Manchester United in the WSL. For Houston Dash, they're coming off a midweek game on Wednesday in which they fell 1-0 over the OL Reign. So maybe still a little bit of heavy legs. We saw some game management switch. We also talked about Oyster not getting the start tonight at right, right back with Haley Hansen returning. We'll see how that plays a factor this evening for the Houston Dash. And I like the changes that James Clarkson's made in this side. I, I think the players that he took out did struggle midweek. I thought Toby Schmidt just didn't look on, looked fatigued, couldn't get on the ball defensively, was not there. Uh, and then you have a player like Jasmine Spencer, delighted she's back into the starting 11, and it's nothing to do with Latsko. I just think Spencer adds a little bit more balance into this attacking side, and she proves she deserves a starting 11 spot when all these players were gone away for national team duty. And then speaking with James Clarkson, just about that back line, he tried having all three of those players with Oyster and Naughton back into this back line with Dahl Kemper. It just didn't work on the day. Oyster struggled playing in a fullback role instead of that center back role. That center back partnership with her and Naughton had been brilliant all season long. But again, it's going to take time to be able to get all three of these players on the pitch at the same time when they can potentially transition into a back three instead of this back four. 
for the Orlando Pride. Coming in with six wins on the season. Same total for the Houston Dash, though. Right now, Orlando sitting fifth in the standings, and Houston on the outside looking in as they sit eighth as we are underway at Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Josh Tolan, former Canadian international, Kaylin Kyle with you. Orlando in their Ad Astra kits, those black and purple kits. And meanwhile, the Houston Dash in the all orange uniforms. Here's Jasmine Spencer playing into Shea Groom. Finds Rachel Daly. Daly back to Groom. Groom with a little room up front, flicking it outside to Christy Mewis, but headed away by Phoebe McLernan, but not out. Mewis with just the poor touch, you see, goes out and off the webbing. And this is a good play by Houston already early on into this match. Midweek, we didn't see this, that quick play through the midfield, that one-two touch. And this is what happens when you do bring a player in like a Shagram gets on that half turn, plays forward, and you touched on it last match. Maybe maybe not starting someone like a Shagram because she was on those four yellow cards. He alluded to that this game is where they really wanted that three points because they know how difficult it is to go to Orlando and their home record as well. They're usually pretty good at home, only the second loss on the season there. So um, I think for James Clarkson, they got to come out on the front foot against this Orlando Pride side. First corner of the night for either side as Christy Mewes will line up on the near corner with that left foot. Mewis drives it to the near post, headed away. Played back outside by Chapman, who gets the return pass from U.S. A great look at Alyssa Chapman. Played in Sweden at one point in her professional career. Of course, one of those Canadians that brought home gold. James Clarkson talked about the work rate that she has played here over really these last couple of months due to the Olympics. Important for her to get back fully healthy. Dahl Kemper making her second straight start with the Houston Dash after coming over in a trade from North Carolina Courage as she plays it up to Jasmine Spencer, the former Orlando Pride member. McLaren will play it into Krieger. Krieger named to August Team of the Month here in the NWSL. Daly. She'll play it back to midfield. Dahl Kemper. Playing out to Haley Hansen back after the one game suspension due to the five yellow cards. And for both of these teams here today, they're gonna have to be able to, to manage their minutes in this heat. Four o'clock game in Orlando, not easy to do with the heat and humidity. So again, pick your moments when to press as a team, pick your moments when you need that breather just to sit in defensively and just allow maybe the other team a little bit of time switching that point of attack with that back line, not, not allowing them to play through you. So you're always having to make those 60 yard recovery runs. Turner getting the start tonight, drops back for Harris. Harris passing Nicole Barnhart for the NWSL all-time lead in saves. She stop any of your shots back in the day? None of them, because I never <laughs> got close enough to that 18-yard box. I was hoping maybe there was one or two. <laughs> Prince on the far touchline. Prince, one of those players that James Clarkson loves to see out wide. Talks about how when she's with Canada, I tend to see her more in the middle, but she, he loves how she creates space and can drive at players. And one of the large reasons that he puts her on that outside right position for this dash squad. Naughton plays to Abby Dahlkemper. Now to Haley Hansen. Not one of those big acquisitions after before last season coming over from the Chicago Red Stars. Really solidified her spot at that center back position for the Houston Dash. One of the things that James Clarkson has talked about with the three games in the span of six days is their really inability for this squad to train together and still develop that chemistry with the newcomer in Abby Dahl Kemper. Even goes back to last week, or I should say on Wednesday, there's a few different times when Katie Naughton was yelling Megan Oyster's name to Abby Dahl Kemper. 
And I think one thing that can play into their advantage is if you have a player like a Dahl Kemper that has played with some of the best players in the world. You can see Marta here. There's love players like this, you know, just having those early conversations with officiating in this match. But you can see this Shea Groom. This is what she adds to this side. Obviously not getting the start last game. It's just her ability to ha have control with the ball at her feet, move the ball up higher up the pitch, and then suck defenders out. I think they were lacking a little bit of that midweek. But just going back to your point that you made, having someone like an Abby Dahlkemper, even though she's played with some of the best players in the world, it does take time to build that partnership and to build how players move off the ball. Which foot are they more comfortable with? Do I lead this pass or do I play it directly to the foot? It takes a little bit of time. And like you just said, they don't have training sessions at the moment, which is difficult. Buis loops one in. Orlando Pride, they've scored 20 goals on the season. Houston Dash just a couple behind them with 18 as Groom comes up with a loose ball, trying to chase her down is Sydney LaRue. Mewis plays it out wide. Chapman looking for Daly and Allie Krieger right there for the Pride. McLernan will send it all the way down to midfield. And Jody Taylor, who has two goals on the season. Battle here on the near touch line and last touch by Naughton in the dash. When you look at these two teams historically, Houston Dash controlling it. They're unbeaten in the last eight games against the Orlando Pride. James Clarkson. James Clarkson to Houston Dash, surprising everyone in the inaugural Challenge Cup, winning that. First trophy in Houston history. Houston still looking for that first ever playoff appearance in the NWSL. Which seems crazy to think. You look at all the talent that this Houston Dash side has. I mean, even the depth that they're starting to build off the bench, just how good they did when players were gone away to the Olympics because of that depth. So if this is the year to do it, they should be able to, I mean. Nice ball from Spencer looking for Mewis. It also benefits Houston this year is the fact that it's six teams mm -hmm. instead of four teams that will move on to the playoffs. And just going back to that last buildup from Houston, it's a brilliant defensive work from Krieger, just getting on the right side of a player like Mewis. It's, it, she's a handful when she makes that deep, late midfield run, and it was perfect positioning for that center back, and this is why she has uh, gotten the, the player recognition that she deserves this past month because she's just been fabulous in that role. Mewis has scored a goal with every team she has played with in the NWSL, just one game. With or, or excuse me, with Chicago, but she scored in that game for the Red Stars. Hey. One of the things that James Clarkson talked about in our phone conversation was the difficult decision it was to have to sit Megan Oyster for this game, but he felt with rest that she needed as well. And one of the large reasons why she's also not getting to start this evening is Tim Rack will play it out wide. And coming back was Michelle Prince to knock this one back to Abby Dahlkemper. And I think we can talk about rest all day long, but quite frankly, really struggled in that fullback role. She's been brilliant in that center back role. But then speaking to James Clarkson, I had asked him, would you not consider, oops, sorry about that, would you not consider maybe playing the three of them at the back and having an Abby Dahlkemper be that central of the three? And he said, I would love to. I just do not have time with the match congestion. So again, maybe that's just another a reason in yes to rest her, but she didn't do great in that fullback role and it has nothing to do with her it being her fault, more comfortable in that center back role. Not in playing it forward. Daly would drop it off to Groom. Groom, the championship MVP in that inaugural Challenge Cup, gets the return pass. Looking for Nichelle Prince, and that pass cut out by Allie Riley, but the fall by Daly, and she puts it in the left corner, and Rachel Daly with her fourth goal of the season. 
This is just so unfortunate from Orlando. It's just, it's initially great defending, fabulous defending, sees the run of Nichelle Prince, and it's that quick ball through the midfield. You can see Rachel Daly, Shea Groom, and this is what I was talking about with Shea Groom, just her vision and awareness. And Riley reads this well. She's on the right side, but just takes a bad touch. And you can see just the miscommunication. You can see Riley wanting Turner to step forward and clear this one for her. It's a bad touch again from Riley. And it's a late run from Rachel Daly, who actually starts this attack in the midfield. Well-deserved goal, early goal on the road for Houston. Completely different team today than we saw midweek. The captain has led the Houston Dash in scoring for the last four years. You also look at Rachel Daly now tied in terms of regular season goal record with Kaylee Awad, who's now with the Chicago Red Stars. Across all competitions, though, Rachel Daly does have the Houston Dash record at that top scoring spot. McLernan, Gunny Jonstadter. Here's Tim Rack, two former Utah Royals players. Chapman. Houston with a lead on the road here as Becky Burley with it showing off the nice hands, catching that. Still funny to believe that Becky Burley on vacation on a fishing trip gets called in to it. take the Orlando Pride job. And originally she said no, she didn't want to have anything to do with professional soccer, was happy with the college game. And then when she got the call, she thought, hey, this is the right time, the perfect time to take it. And she jumped on it. And, and anyone that has spoken about her, even off the record when I've spoken to players about her, whether it's college or professional, everyone has such wonderful things to say about her. She gives it her all. She's one of the hardest working coaches. So I love that they called her once she was on a fishing trip, probably like pulling fish off the hook. And she was like, you know what? This is my time because you see it in interviews. You see it in interviews after training sessions, whether it's a team that's putting it out uh, with questions that are asked her and just her passion in behind it. This is what you need in the NWSL. You need coaches like this that have the passion, that have the work rate, that have the desire to want to coach at this level and make these players not only better players, but better people. And I think she has all of that. It's like Laura Harvey at OL Reign. You also look at Becky Burley. She was actually going to be a professor at the University of Florida teaching a leadership course. Says everything you need to know. Three former players playing in this game, Gabby Seiler, Erica Timrak, and Maggie Doherty Howard all getting the start, all former Florida Gators. And here's Timrak. Timrak with that game-winning goal last week against Gotham, and it was a stunner as Youngstadter plays it out to the near side of McLernan. Taylor for Timrak. Timrak sidesteps to the left, drops it off for the Brazilian Marta. Marta will go outside. Nice move by Riley on the far touch line. Timrak looking to turn away from Seiler. And just going back to your point about Timrak, she looks like a completely different player under Becky. The confidence that she's oozing, her fitness level look up, looks up and just her confidence like you alluded to in a fantastic goal last game to give them the three points but again when a new manager comes in and instills confidence in players it completely shows up on the pitch and that is one player that has been highlighted by it Lewis will drop this off for daily young star plays it back to Allie Krieger Krieger looking for LaRue on the end line Riley. U.S. Orlando requesting a handball, not gonna get it. Spencer. Spencer coming in over in a trade from Ola Reina as the long ball right down off the chest of Daly, crossing it, but no one there for the dash. Daly represented England in the Tokyo Olympics. She's been in America for a while though, went to college at St. John's where she's still the all-time leading scorer. Yeah, 
Dahl Kemper, 2017 Defender of the Year, the NWSL, plays it to Seiler. I don't know what's made me think of this, but if you're a player down this left-hand side or the right-hand side from Orlando, you're delighted. These are one of those things as a player at a four o'clock game and you see the shade on that side, you're like, yes, I've hit the lottery, I've hit the jackpot. You played in both Houston <laughs> and Orlando. Which one is more difficult Houston. in terms of the weather? T hands down Houston. And, and you can even see Jess Fishlock uh, had her post-game interview about playing in Houston. It is such a difficult place to go and play. Spencer will play this back. Siler to Daly. Room. Hansen. Marta looking to switch sides. And Sydney LaRue. Look there at Rachel Daly scoring in the 10th minute, her fourth goal of the season here in the NWSL. That goal unassisted. Taylor. Riley in the channel. Dispossessed by Nichelle Prince. Prince looking a little bit more active here in this opening 17 minutes of play than on Wednesday night with those heavy legs. Turner back defending Prince. Prince gets by Turner, over to help his young starter. Appreciate that challenge by Iceland's Gunny on starter. And it's a fabulous defensive play when you have someone like Nichelle Prince and now the balance bringing in a Jasmine Spencer down this left hand side. You need those two midfielders, whether it's Dowerty Howard or Jan's daughter, dropping in and making that support. So if that first defender misses one of these attacking threat players on the witch, you have that cover and you have that support. Jordy Howard at midfield to the near side and McLernan. We've seen McLernan play at center back this year and now getting the start at outside back. Here's Jane Campbell. You look at Jane Campbell before the Tokyo Olympics played 71 straight games over 6,000 minutes between the sticks for the dash before that streak ended when she went off to Tokyo. Krieger. And now to Rachel Daly, my correction, she represented Team Great Britain also represented England in the 2019 World Cup. Speaking of friendlies coming up, well, there you get a great look at Alex Morgan back from the Tokyo Olympics for the U.S. national team. I'm sure Charlie in there as well that she's watching over. Uh -huh. You can see you can her see, trailing. You can see LaRue's kids. How, I mean, how cute can you be? My kids would be hanging off seats at the moment. <laughs> Marta will represent Brazil in the friendlies come September. Riley, the New Zealand captain, crossing in. On there to head it away and at the end line, it's gonna roll out and corner here for the Orlando Pride. in the far corner. Yeah. 
Driven towards the spot, headed up by LaRue. Look at LaRue, seven goals on the season. You go back to that first year in 2013 where she had 11 when she played for the Boston Breakers. Earlier this season, made her 100th NWSL appearance in a game against the Portland Thorns. Naughton going over the top, looking for Jasmine Spencer. Krieger will relay this back to Ashton Harris. Turner. Turner spent four seasons previously in the WSL with Manchester United. Does have four caps with England. He was dropping it back for Daly, and she'll strike it, but that's gonna hit off McLernan. Headed back by Groom. Prince just outside the area. And that off the hands there in the chest of Gunny Onstotter. And I believe this is Daly that takes a shot just top of the 18 yard box, but you can see Jasmine Spencer down this left hand side unmarked. Understand when you have someone like Rachel Daly standing on the ball, nine times out of 10, she's gonna shoot that. I would have loved to see her get her head up and just slide Jasmine Spencer in there back post. Plenty of traffic in front of Ashton Harris. Mewis. And that one last touch by Non flicks it out of play. And who is it? Shea Groom. I mean, again, that first thought, can I play forward? You look at this goal, it's fantastic. And it comes from that midfield presence. First thought, play forward, set back, and continue the runs and just have loads of pressure. Campbell outside the area will send it high into the sky. Houston, when they've scored first on the season, they do have five wins on the year. Lone goal on this one coming from Rachel Daly in the 10th minute. Taylor, Marta, out wide to Riley. Over defensively is Haley Hansen, back after the one game suspension due to the five yellow cards. Shea Groom is sitting on four yellow cards. She'll have to be careful here today. tonight for the Houston Dash and they would move up into that sixth spot as they would have 24 points. Washington right now currently in that last position with 23. They were supposed to play the Portland Thorns last night but that game suspended due to COVID. So we'll see when we get a makeup date for that one. You also look back to last night in NWSL action, Gotham and Chicago, that one ended nil to nil. And then race in Louisville and OL Reign, that one ending in a one to one draw. And Krieger hasn't put a foot wrong down this right hand side. She's dealt with Jasmine Spencer brilliantly in this first 23 minutes. So can she keep continuing to do this for a 90 minute performance here tonight to help this back line of Orlando with the attacking presence of Houston? Twenty-fifth minute here in Orlando, Florida. Houston up one to zero. Josh Tolan, former Canadian international, Kaylin Kyle with you here today. Afternoon game at Exploria Stadium. We do have one other game this evening. That will be Kansas City hosting North Carolina. That will be at 7 p.m. Eastern. We will have a high
hydration break in this one. Kaylin talking about the heat and how bad it is in Orlando. So it'll give these players a little bit of a break and give themselves a chance to get some of those liquids in. This one played out wide to Prince, trying to beat Riley to the ball. And Riley's struggling down this left-hand side with Nichelle Prince. Yes, Nichelle Prince is, I think, one of the best attackers down the right-hand side in the NWSL because she's worked on her productivity once she gets past that first defender, whether it's scoring, whether it's putting in the correct pass. So moving forward for Orlando, tactically they need to make a little bit of an adjustment just to help deal with Nichelle Prince, whether that's pulling a winger back in uh, Sydney LaRue just to help deal with that overload or just dropping one of the two defensive midfielder screens a little bit deeper to help deal with a 2v1. Lewis. Cleared away by Krieger. Siler trying to track this ball down on the far touchline, unable to get there. Chapman plays it out wide. And now Orlando pushing up as Taylor looking to give it back to LaRue. Tim Rack to Marta. Steps inside. Marta with the left on the ground. A little worm burner. Easy stop for Jane Campbell. And I don't mind this from Marta, that long range shot, because we've seen her score from this distance. But Orlando hasn't really been in that attacking presence or that attacking third very much in 26 minutes. I'd love to see that just that extra pass help this Orlando Pride just gain a little bit more momentum in that attacking side. Dahl Kemper, the new addition. Dahl Kemper last year with Man City. Hansen. Two players on her trying to find Daly. Daly at least flicks it back in, but unsure of what to do with it. it was grooming Hansen, but ultimately Hansen able to get to the ball for the dash. Hard collision there. Groom getting the worst of it. It looked like Tim Rack hit her from behind unintentionally. As Groom is the player down. She is a tough player. Really sandwiched between the two players, Marta and Erica Timrak. You see the replay here with Shea Groom. It almost looks like she just gets that knee across the head. Once she's going to ground here, you can see just her head hitting off the inside knee of Timrak. There's no intent by either of these players, just someone like a Shea Groom that is not going to stop trying to get on this end of the ball. So you can see she's in she's in a lot of pain on the ground. So hopefully this is nothing serious. You can see Marta uh, caught a little bit of her ear of it, but. Looking at Orlando right now in the fifth spot in the standings as we will also take our hydration break right now with Orlando trailing one to zero against the Dash. Dash right now eighth in the standings. Lone goal coming from Rachel Daly. That one back in the 10th minute for Houston for Rachel Daly, her fourth goal of the season. She's one of those players that James Clarkson would love to get going here a little bit more as well as see if they can get Shea Groom to be a little bit more aggressive. Shea Groom was the player slow to get up for the Dash. Michelle Prince you could add into that list as well as Christy Mewis. A much different looking team this year in terms of teams not being caught off guard by the Houston Dash like they were last year in the Challenge Cup.
And now we will take a look at August's team of the month. Well, one player from this game in that one, that being the center back, Allie Krieger. You look at Casey Murphy, leads the NWSL in shutouts. And what can you say about Anamano, Megan Rapino, the player of the month here with four goals, back-to-back -back games with a brace that she had for OL Reign. She's been magnificent. This is a good-looking 11 of the month. I agree with every last one of them. And just talking about someone that is in the match tonight with Krieger has not put a foot wrong defensively. She looks, again, underneath a new manager, she looks like a different player, a newfound confidence. And it's not that she was playing bad, but she knows her role here now. And that comes down to a manager that is instilling that in you and saying, you're the leader of this team. You, Ashlyn Harris, at that back, you guys need to lead this team from back to front. And she is doing that early on here. And then you can see Fishlock. I mean, she's been brilliant for Seattle. Megan Rapino's been brilliant. Nadia Nadim uh, has been good. Um, but I'm, I'm liking this. I don't think I'd make too many changes. Nadim with a goal last night. But you look at Caprice Didasco for Gotham. Every month she has been named Team of the Month here in the NWCL. You have to think that she has a good chance at being best 11 at the end of the year. Carson Pickett having a great season for North Carolina and, and I, Denise O'Sullivan in I the middle. I think someone that should get a shout as, as well down this right-hand side is Kiki Pickett. I thought she's been brilliant um, since coming into the starting 11. You can see that Groom is up and moving, which is fantastic uh, because, again, you never want to see a player get hit, get sandwiched, or, or stay down injured. And this is going to be a key to success for Houston to keep this three points in this 1-0 lead. Riley passing midfield. Looping it up and no one ahead though for the Orlando Pride in this space race. Second meeting between these two clubs. Houston won the first one two to one, so it went today and they would have the advantage when you're talking about playoff positioning. Again, six teams making the playoffs this year. Top two teams will have a bye. The well, fun thing is there's a chance for teams one through four to have a home game this year. As in the previous season, it was just four teams as Jerome tripped up there on the challenge by Doherty Howard. Clean tackle, Tim Rack. Tim Rack retired last year, missed the game, so elected to come back. Now playing in our home state of Florida. here by Doherty Howard. Taylor was giving chase. One of our viewers on Twitch talking about Marta's dribbling ability, just the way that she controls the ball at her feet. One of the best to ever do it really is like a yo-yo at times when she has the ball right there, she just does what she wants. She's one of those players when Canada would play against Brazil, I hated seeing her in the middle of the pitch because that meant I had to defend her and nine times out of 10, she was gonna skin me, leave me on the ground, even if I were to drag her to the ground with me, somehow she would keep her feet and her footing. She's one of the best. I think she's an amazing advocate for the game on and off the pitch in both the men and female side. And I love that she's here playing in the NWSL. But when she grew up, she didn't even have a pair of cleats that were her own. She had to borrow one of her teammates' grandfather's cleats to play with when she was a youngster in Brazil. Nice little touch there by Riley, connecting with Jonstadter. Jonstadter with numbers to the right. And Orlando are just lacking a little bit of creativity in that final third. This was a great build-up play. Quick football, one touch through that middle of the pitch, and then creating overloads down the left-hand side. But once you get deep into that final third, it's just to have that little bit of patience. Allow your team to get up. They've been defending so deep and condensing the team parts. Just take a little bit more time and quality on the ball. Daly turns inside. He's looking for Groom, but headed away by Orlando's Amy Turner. Lewis. 
waits for some help. Gets it from Chapman, who plays it back inside, and Gabby Seiler. Gabby Seiler beginning her career with the Portland Thorns, had never scored a goal while she has two this season in Houston Dash Orange. This one played up to Shea Groom on the edge, attacking Jan Stotter, Groom. And another player that's impressed me so much is her. Not Rachel Daly, the one before. You changed it too quick on me production is Jan Stotter. I think she's been so good for Orlando, whatever role it has been, whether they've had to drop her into a fullback role. I do like her centrally 10 times better. I think she's so good. She breaks up play. She gets on the ball, gets in those half turns, and she's really the, the ticker within this Orlando Prides team. Neo is setting up for an inward swinging ball. Drives it into the six, tapped away, headed up by Groom, pushed back, still loose. Hansen, I don't know how that ball did not go in, crossing, headed away. Mewis, and that one pushed up and over the crossbar by Harris. Well, it looked like the Dash were gonna have their second goal. Harris there with a big stop there late in that possession. And I'm not sure how the first initial one did not go into the back of the net, but Ashlyn Harris, again, having herself a day in between the pipes. Fantastic save on this second one with Mewis with an absolute rocket, hits this one on the volley, and Ashlyn just pushes this one up and over the bar. Mewis will try again, hoping for a different result this time. Plays it short. Chapman. Dull Kemper going out wide for Daly. Remarkable backline play there on that last corner by the Orlando Pride as we take a look at this replay. You see this initial one. Ashlyn looks like she just gets her tip of her finger on this one. And then it's just a scramble inside the box. Again, another good look of this second opportunity with Christy Mewis on the ball. Ashlyn Harris just having those strong hands and pushing it up and over the bar. Dare I say it, that she shouldn't have been left off the Olympic team. You look at Ashlyn Harris, <laughs> a player. Don't cut me off, come on. Sorry, I'm just kidding. that I'm you kidding. play with, but what makes her such a good player and such a keeper over the course of her career? She's got this fire in her eyes and this fire in her belly. She takes no crap for one. She's the hardest working player in training and she's always going at you, but in the best way possible. So whether you're having a poor practice, she'll go at you, but in a positive way, she'll spin it and know that she can suck so much out of you. I think she would be an incredible coach one day because she gets the best out of everyone. She's one of those goalkeepers other than Hope Solo that I was scared to play in front of, but I loved playing in front of her because you don't want to let someone like her down because she works so hard to keep you guys so successful. Tim Rack. Groom to Daly at midfield. Has Prince outside to the right. And she will find Prince and offside flag is up. And this Houston Dash side today, they, they look like a different team in this attacking third. They're dynamic, the movement on and off the ball. And it comes down to the balance that we spoke about in the pregame, bringing someone like a Jasmine Spencer on. Yes, are we seeing loads of attacks down this right-hand side? We are, but it's because Krieger's doing such a good job defensively helping deal with the handful of Jasmine Spencer. But Michelle Prince is just so good, and she's changed her game in that attacking presence, not giving the ball away cheaply. Yes, we just seen, seen her offside there, but just picking the right moments. And then Rachel Daly, whether it's popping off the front and her partnership with Christy Mewis in the midfield, I just think this Houston side has a great balance. Taylor coming near side and McLernan. Maybe 
Jordy Howard. Jordy Howard in her first season with the Orlando Pride after spending the first four with the Washington Spirit. Young's daughter. Looking for LaRue. Corner now for the Pride. Taylor. Plays it in. Tim Rack back to Taylor. Looking for Turner. And now cleared away by the dash. Spencer giving chase, but right there is Krieger. Just again, perfect positioning. And, and Jasmine Spencer is one of those players that has pace with her. And Krieger, maybe not known for her pace, but when you're not known for your pace, you have to be known for good body positioning. And she has done it time and time again in this first 45 minutes. Marta. Try to squeeze through two defenders, loses possession. Second meeting between these two clubs here in what's known as the space race. Both teams, you look at Orlando as well as Houston, having NASA nearby. Ad Astra kit is the kit that the Orlando Pride are wearing. They actually sent this very exact kit to outer space with NASA. And if you look at the dashes, normal white kits, the Love You Dash kit, that is also a space themed jersey as well. So both clubs representing NASA here, and that's why this is known as the space race. How do we not have jerseys from either of these teams? We gotta get some of My those. son has a jersey from the league from racing, but I'm yet to get one. I need to get on it. Hanson trying to cut off the angle. This one dispossessed by Marta. Crossing. Had Jody Taylor in that six yard box, but just could not reach her. And this is the, I think, first opportunity where the Pride have really broken down Houston. Good defensive play from Marta. And then Marta just being Marta, taking on two defenders. A perfect ball into the box, but just runners not making those threatening runs. So for Jody Taylor, she needs to make that darting run across that, that goalkeeper into the front post. And then just someone, whether it's a late midfield run or whether it's Tim Rack coming on that back post, it just needs to have better quality with runs inside the box. Dahl Camper. Riley inside to Taylor. Young starter. That one just over the head of Spencer was looking for McLernan. Tim Rack. an equalizer here before half. We'll have highlights and stats from this one, as well as action from last night in the NWSL. And I'd love to see a little bit more from Sydney Rouge. She's been quiet in this first 45 minutes. Whether it's rolling off the front, just getting a little bit more involved or making those amazing runs that we see her make. Tim Rack looking for LaRue on that back post. Through that fullback center back channel, she's 
so good off the ball and has the vision and awareness to get behind the back line and make it difficult. Houston, yes, they're dropping back deep defensively. So for Orlando, just that route one sometimes, switch it up, try to find the front runners of a Sydney LaRue because that is where her bread and butter is, getting behind this back line, getting it onto the left foot or the right foot and slotting that across the goalkeeper. James Clarkson talked about the importance of this game and taking three points on the road against a team that currently sits ahead of them in the standings as Orlando right now fifth in the NWSL. Orlando, they made the playoffs one time in their history, that one being back in 2017. Naughton. Mewis, three minutes of stoppage time added on here in the first half. Hanson turning in. Hanson all four years with the Houston Dash, playing it down the line. No one there for Houston. Doherty Howard. Maru now just outside the area. Riley. Gordy Howard, and then this one driven on and grabbed out of the air by Jane Campbell. And you can feel that momentum shift in this match. Houston really on the front foot for, I'd say, the good first 35 minutes of this game. And then the Pride finally starting to have a little bit more quality in that final third, that quick one, two touch football. Play in, get it back, get it out wide. Now it's just that final little bit getting closer in around that 18 yard box, getting good quality shots. You've seen Marta a few times getting good balls into the box. LaRue, looking to curl this one and just wide. Well, LaRue doesn't need much space there, showing off from distance, just could not get it to bend in that far post. And this is why it was hard on Sydney LaRue earlier on, just hadn't called her name a lot, but you look at this run. Just pulling off that back shoulder. Doesn't take a great first touch, but then it's just to set her up to get it on this right foot and have the power just to whip this one far post. Nearly gets this one on target, but this is so much better from LaRue. LaRue currently tied a second in the NWSL in terms of goals scored with seven. Ashley Hatch and Ifoma Anomano also sitting on seven. Bethy Balser though leading the way with eight after her goal last night against Race in Louisville. I don't mind this from Krieger. It's in the, the opposition's end. Doesn't want Rachel Daly having any time and space on the ball. So again, this is just showing Krieger's, just her seniority within the league, her international play, taking a good tactical foul here. I will say one thing. If you are tuning in and listening to us on Twitch, let us know where you're watching from. I always love seeing uh, if there's anyone from Saskatchewan. I haven't seen anyone from Saskatchewan tune in, but let us know where you guys are all watching. Spencer turning away. Mewis looking to give it back to Spencer and cut off by McLernan. And there is the whistle to end the first half. Kaylin, your thoughts on the first 45 minutes of play? I thought it was pretty even. I think Orlando struggled the first 30, not struggled, just weren't great in that first 30 minutes. Defensively, were very good after giving away that goal by just a sloppy touch down that left-hand side with Riley. And then slowly started to come on a little bit. So give credit where credit's due. Houston come into a difficult place. A lot of fixtures in a short amount of time getting that early go-ahead goal. They were brilliant in that attacking third and made no mistake. And it was groom for me, the difference maker coming into this 11 here today. Dash with a one goal lead here heading into half as they lead over Orlando. Lone goal coming from Rachel Daly back in the 10th minute. So back to locker room for both these two sides as Orlando will look to regroup and try and figure out a game plan here for the second half to come up with that equalizer. We'll have highlights and stats 
from this one as well as some other action from around the NWCL. We'll step aside. You are watching the NWCL right here on Twitch. Orlando, Houston at half. Welcome back. 45 minutes in the books between the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash. Dash on top here at half with a Rachel Daly goal as we'll take a look back at the highlights from last night's game and we'll look at Louisville versus race or excuse me racing Louisville versus OL rain and a game that ended one to one and this game was controlled the majority of it by racing Louisville and here Nadine Nadim with a great pass getting this goal and it's a brilliant goal but it's a difficult place to go play it's a fantastic run from Nadine Nadim just splitting that takes a lucky deflection does get a little bit on it but has enough power and pace to put this one away for racing but then the 65th minute Jess Fishlock I mean she has been on fire the last few weeks good build up play down this left hand side gets her head up and just slots this one across this 18 yard box and it's a lovely little cut back here to King on top of this box and just could not put this one away well forget about we should have cut that one before it went to Jess Fishlock it doesn't do it justice and then coming here the OL rain just aren't finished Bethany Balser she has been phenomenal to say the least. I love that she has really solidified herself in this starting 11 because she deserves it. Set piece opportunities, balls from wide areas. She's brilliant heading the ball home as well. You look at those last three games for all rain, picking up seven points in that span in three games in six days. But here at half, Orlando trailing at home against the Houston Dash by a score of one to zero. Welcome back. 45 in the books between the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash as we'll take a look back at the highlights from the first half between these two clubs. And Houston would get going early in this one against the Orlando Pride. They started out on fire and considering that they just are coming off a midweek match and a game before that, so congestion. But they started off, again, sloppy play at this back from Riley and you can see it in her face she takes a heavy touch and she's looking at Turner come and save me put your foot through this just again takes a little bit of a heavy touch and it's Rachel Daly that makes no mistake and slots this one home but it's a great run from the self Michelle Prince you can see it in Riley's face she knows it's a bad touch she's like Turner get across and help me out and Rachel Daly says not today early on and puts Houston up 1-0. Daly with her fourth goal of the season here. Another great chance for the dash. And it's a service from U.S. It's brilliant, but it's Ashlyn Harris. I don't know how this one doesn't go in initially. Takes a bobble out to this far right-hand side. And Mewis, again, just sneaking in. <clears throat> gets this one on the half volley and just pushes this one up and over the bar. Ashlyn Harris having herself a night here again today. I feel like a broken record every time I'm calling Orlando games because of just how good she is between the pipes. 469 saves coming into the game and NWSL record now after she passed Nicole Barnhart who had 468 late though in this first half Orlando trying to find their stride. They really were the last 10 minutes of the game it was all Orlando just not getting in close enough to the net because of the defensive responsibilities that Houston Dash are putting in so can they have a little bit more calmness in and around this 18 yard box but a great strike from far out. That strike coming from Gunny Youngstunner. As we take a look at the first half stats, Orlando Pride can join the possession in this one, 55% to 45 for the Houston Dash. Yeah, and you look at the shots though for Houston. I mean, six shots, three of those on target, those coming in that first 30 minutes, I believe. And then Orlando, again, starting to find the rhythm, starting to find their feet. So it's been a very evenly matched game. And I feel like we're gonna have a couple more goals in the second 45 minutes. I don't wanna give it the commentator's curse but I just, that's my gut feeling. It's usually never wrong. Orlando though, building momentum into that halftime break. So maybe they can get some of that early in that second half, try to get off on that front foot. But here at half, Houston on the road, leading one to zero over the Orlando Pride. You're watching the NWCL on Twitch. Back just moments away from the second half kick here between the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash. For you, Kaylin, what are you looking for out of Orlando building from that end of that first half into the second here? To keep doing what they were doing the last 10 to 15 minutes. I thought they were really good in that attacking end, but just weren't able to get close enough to be very effective when their shots were on target. Now it comes down to Houston doing a great job defensively, 
But what we know about Orlando is they have that individual Bruins. They have Marta, they have Sydney LaRue, they have Tim Rack, even Taylor that are so good on the ball. So it's going to take a moment of individual brilliance to break down this Houston side. And then for Houston, this player right here, Rachel Daly, phenomenal player, both on and off the pitch, on and off the ball, fantastic. And really the partnership between her and Muse today and Groom, that front tri triangle has been brilliant. So can they keep working on what they did in that first 30 minutes of the first 45? Second half underway at Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Josh Torn, former Canadian international. Kaylin Kyle with you this evening here as Orlando looks for three more points. Right now sitting fifth in the standings. If they were to win here tonight, they would jump up to fourth in the standings. Meanwhile, for Houston, they would move up to that sixth position. We talked about it earlier. Houston have never made the playoffs in their history as a franchise. Meanwhile, Orlando have already made the playoffs just once, that being in 2017. As you get a look here at Abby Dahlkemper in her second straight start for the Houston Dash. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. We've got a great one here tonight between these two clubs. We have two of the most intense players in Rachel Daly and Marta. Always a fun one when these two get together as this is played high into the sky. Riley. Here's LaRue. LaRue with a great shot attempt there at the end of the first half, nearly curling one in. Hansen getting the start here this evening for the Houston Dash after sitting last game due to a yellow card suspension. So did not play against O.L. Rain as this hits off the arm of Jody Taylor who will play it out wide. McLernan on trying to avoid Spencer. Krieger, team of the month for August in the NWSL. The only player for Orlando to be on that team. Mewis. Mewis had a great chance at a goal opportunity, but was denied by Ashlyn Harris. LaRue skips through three defenders. McLernan on the far touch line. Don plays it out and a throw here for the Pride. struggled at home this season just two wins they actually have a better road record than they do helm record here at Exploria Stadium with four wins on the road once again that pressure by Nichelle Prince winning the ball now striding up has a little room to work with Prince to her right and that one stopped by the leg of Ashlyn Harris well she can do it with her hands and she can do it with her feet and you could see that opportunity when Riley was on the ball. She wanted to play back, took that extra thought of trying to cut in and played herself down this line. But go with your first instinct. When you're going up against a player like Nichelle Prince, play that ball back. Get some power on it. Use your, your goalkeeper that has great feet, that has the confidence, that can switch the, the play. And I think that first mistake, almost happened here again well it did happen here she got dispossessed from Nichelle Prince so can she just switch on mentally I think she's really struggled in this match so far down this left hand side Chapman she'll recycle it back to midfield Megan Oyster could be used as a substitution seen her start every game this year until this one tonight for the dash Siler. And if this score holds, I think it would be a fabulous player to bring on, just not in a fullback position. I, I, I think she really, really struggled there um, as it's not her natural one. Spencer crossing. Riley. Now here's Naughton, the center back. Pressure by LaRue.
Jane Campbell will play it to Dahl Kemper. One to zero here at Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Josh Torr and Kaylin Kyle with you this evening. Kaylin, actually, you played for both these two teams, correct? Orlando <laughs> and Houston. Who <laughs> didn't I play for in this league? Josh, I feel like you're throwing me under the bus. I'm going to take it, though, because I will say Houston saved me from a disaster where I was before. So they actually asked, or I asked them to trade for me in order to get me out of a bad situation. They did, thankfully, said, you're not going to spend a lot of time in the starting 11 because they had a lot of U.S. national team players within that squad. And then moved from Houston, thankfully, into the organization uh, to over to Portland where I was dealt with Alex Morgan on the trade. Tim Rack looking to thread that one through to Jody Taylor, but couldn't connect on the pass. Gordy Howard, former member of the Washington Spirit, will drop this one back to Krieger. Turner, majority of her career in England before coming over to the NWSL. Sends it high into the Orlando sky. Groom. Knocked away off the ball by Youngstar, and Erica Timrak picks it up for the pride. Doherty Howard. Near side. Groom. Plays it off of Haley Hansen. Leroux with a long throw, looking for Jody Taylor, but headed away by Abby Dahlkemper. Taylor to that right foot, Marta. Turner bringing it out wide, was looking for Ali Riley. I think this would be a good game too for Orlando to maybe go to their bench. Uh, 52 minutes, haven't really had that much of an attacking presence. Maybe bring someone on like a Taylor Korniak. I think she started the season off very well, whether it was her back towards the net, playing in the middle of the pitch, taking players on. She's very good with the ball at her feet, playing in those tight pockets of space that we've seen Orlando struggling in, in these 52 minutes consecutively. Or then maybe bringing on someone like a Vigiano just to have a little bit of fresh legs to help with this momentum coming out of that first 45. First yellow card handed out on the evening. That one going to Rachel Daly. And it's a correct call from the referee. High, high boot to the face. We know Rachel Daly loves to get stick, and there's no intent around this. She's not trying to injure the player, but it is the right call from the refs. Look at Shea Groom sitting on four yellow cards right now for the Houston Dash. Last game, Haley Hansen missed because of the five yellow card accumulation. Marta driving it in, headed away by Mewis. Jan Stodder. Always love that when fans are supportive and gotta passionate. love the crowds. <laughs> That's one of the great things to have back is the crowds in the stadiums, the drummers, just everyone supporting their respective team. about the success of the dash. Nice little back heel there by Taylor. Here to Tim Rack now. Out wide, McLernan. For Houston, unbeaten in their last eight games against the Orlando Pride, looking to make it nine tonight if the score line holds. That 
record, you look at seven wins, one draw, dates all the way back to last year's fall series. A win more importantly for Houston, moves them up to that sixth and final position here in this playoff race. After this game for the dash, seven games remain. Prince. Siler to Shea Groom, but too heavy of a touch. Orlando after this, they'll just have six games remaining on the schedule. Dahl Kemper. Now not in the former Red Star. Not on the return pass. Katie not playing her 100th NWSL game. Still not seen anyone tuning into Twitch from Saskatoon, but I've seen Ireland, I've seen Jamaica, I've seen Brazil, so we got a we got everyone from everywhere around the world except for Saskatoon. You might have to make a call to some of your family members <laughs> back home. I'm shocked my mom's not tuning into this. She always loves listening to me. Jordy Howard to Riley. Orlando looking for an equalizer here in the 57th minute, but dispossessed on the ball by Haley Hansen. Some fans trying to manifest a goal here for Simi LaRue. Do you speak Portuguese? I do not. <laughs> did our producer translate that for you? They did. Thank you, Karina, <laughs> for that translation. If Simi LaRue is able to score, she would be tied with Bethany Balser for the lead league. It is a tight race in the Golden Boot Chase here this season in the NWSL. at the game after this you'll have at 7 p.m. between Kansas City and the North Carolina Courage. Lynn Williams of course one of those players in that golden boot race right now sitting with six goals on her season for the Courage. Spencer on the far touch line. Chapman winning gold medal with Canada in the Tokyo Olympics. Same with Michelle Prince playing it near side to Rachel Daly. Daly crossing, looking for Mewis, and headed away to the side by Ali Krieger. Mewis. Spencer. Spencer gets by McLernan. And then the challenge there by Connie Yonstar, corner here for the dash. And I really hope that Jasmine Spencer keeps her spot in the starting 11. I just think she adds so much to this Houston side. The balance that which she adds takes a little bit of pressure off uh, down this right-hand side with Nichelle Prince because the attacks always come down the right-hand side to Nichelle Prince because she can get on the ball. She allows that time for her teammates to get up and join that point of attack and join that supporting angles. But when you have a player like Jasmine Spencer, she does the defensive work and then also adds that attacking presence as well. Presence as well, excuse me. Mewis drives it deep. And then Ashton Harris goes up, somehow bats away, still loose. Well, there's been chaos on those corners. Ashton Harris still on the ground. Another chance there, Jasmine Spencer was the player next to Ashton Harris on this corner. And you can see this good set piece from Chrissy Mewis that we see time and time again. You can see Jasmine Spencer goes up, 
And it's actually Nichelle Prince that comes through Ashlyn Harris. Doesn't mean to, is trying to win the ball. A good initial battle with Spence and Harris on this initial one. You can just see this on the tail end of it just coming through and Harris gets the brunt end of it. Harris goes up and over, just doesn't catch this initial one because of the presence of Jasmine Spencer. And then you can just see here, Nichelle Prince comes straight through on Harris and it looks like a head collision to, to a hip. Harris last week passed Nicole Barnhart for NWSL's all-time save leader. You look at Harris, she's been out with the U.S. national team as well. You have to think maybe if she was here a little bit more, she could easily have over 500 saves in her career. She could possibly get to that mark this year here in the NWSL as the training staff looks at her at the moment. Houston here with a 1-0 to zero lead. Lone goal in this game coming from Rachel Daly. For you, what would you like to see more of here in Orlando as they look to get things going a little bit, try to steal that momentum back? I think for Orlando, they need to make some substitutes. They need to bring some players off the bench to help, whether it's Vigiano, whether it's Korniak, just to add a little bit more of attacking presence. I think Jody Taylor's been very quiet for Orlando tonight. She hasn't really done a good job popping off that back line to help with that build-up play. I think Sydney LaRue has come alive at times. Uh, I think Tim Rack's been brilliant. I think she's living in those tight pockets of space, but there just needs to be a little bit of a spark, a little bit of fresh leg, especially when you haven't been good at home. In this league, you need to be good at home. You need to collect the three points, and you need to almost make your stadium a fortress. And Orlando have not done that, especially being a team where it's hot, it's humid, it's a, it should be a difficult place to go. So I think subs at this moment in time would be great. I think the back line has done a good job. Players like Krieger, I think Riley's really struggled. So I'd love to see some players come off the bench. And then for Houston, just be switched on. Just over uh, 30 minutes to go here with extra time. I think for them, again, substitutes are going to play a massive role in this bringing players or having players on the bench like a Sophie Schmidt that can just jam up that midfield defensively, having players come off the bench maybe like an Oyster again to help defensively. So it, it, it's going to be managing, and it's going to come down to manager. So I love that we've gone on her because – it's going to come down to this. It's hot. It's humid. Four o'clock kickoff. One nil lead for Houston away from home. Who can tactically outmanage one another here today? You look at Becky Burley, won a national championship with the University of Florida in 1998. Abby Wambach, one of those players on that team for Becky Burley. But now she might have the tough decision. If Ashlyn Harris isn't able to go, we might see Canadian goalkeeper Aaron McLeod come in. Is <laughs> I mean, pick your poison. You have... A world-class goalkeeper in Ashlyn Harris. You have a world-class goalkeeper in Aaron McLeod. Both have played at a high level. Both have played in World Cups. Um, and Aaron McLeod just coming off a gold medal. So the confidence that she oozes. Again, you don't want to see a player like Ashlyn Harris down and injured. And this isn't a player to stay on the ground this long. This is a player that gets knocked, that gets kicked, that gets scratched, and bounces right back up. So hopefully nothing serious but is looking like this will be a sub. There's no reason to risk a player like this, especially when it is a head injury. But coming on is an experienced goalkeeper as well. You look at Harris. She's had some remarkable saves already this game to keep at 1-0. There's a good chance here earlier in the first half on what was another corner where Shea Groom was denied by Harris. And then just seconds later, Christy Mewis denied by Harris with a great save that she popped over the crossbar to keep this game at one to zero. So Becky Burley here will have her work cut out for her as Orlando looks for an equalizer as unfortunately this is one of those things you never want to see with a stretcher coming out and Ashton Harris's night looks to be over. And let's hope it's one of those moments that the stretcher's coming out because it is a head injury and it does look like it's in and around that area that they're just being over cautious with something like this because I have to think maybe that neck just being tight from the collision more so than anything as Harris able to get up and we'll see what Orlando does if Harris will stay in or if we will see Aaron McLeod. And you can see her, she's like, I'm good to go. This is what you love about her. 
I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm just laughing at the strength within Ashlyn Harris. This is why she's one of the best goalkeepers in the league. She's a fighter. You want to play for a player like her. And this is that point that I made earlier. You don't want to let someone down like her because she's going to step up 10 times out of 10 and she's going to battle through anything. And it looks here, she's trying to get the doctors okay to keep going. She wants to keep going, obviously doing the concussion protocols now. You talk about not wanting to let a player down like Ashton Harris. If she does stay in this game, how much does that also motivate you as a player that she got up, that she was able to withstand this injury on this hard collision to keep playing? Look, as a player, you'd probably want Ashlyn just to take herself out of the game because it is that head collision. You don't want to risk anything. But if you, whether you do pull her out of this game, you're going to fight for her. I think this is the correct decision if they are going to pull her out of this. Yeah, they are making the sub, and I think it's the right one. Good, bad, or ugly. I think any time a player gets knocked in the head, this is why those, those uh, concussion protocols have been Im implemented with the substitution rules, is to protect the players, and it, was, and it is long overdue. So it looks like Ashen Harris's night is over, and that will bring in Aaron McLeod. Thumbs up from Harris as she walks into the tunnel and back to the locker room where she'll get some more medical attention. And then a player you know very well in Air McLeod, she will come in for Orlando for the remainder of this one. will jog on, greeted by Sydney LaRue and Maggie Doherty Howard. And Marissa Vigiano will also come on right now for Erica Timrak. So two substitutions in that time, although we believe the Aaron McLeod one was a concussion substitute for Ashton Harris. difficult is it for a keeper to come on during the middle of the game like this when you're not really expected to on those rare occasions they will plan for a mid-game sub but not tonight that was the thought no and this is why I would never be a goalkeeper because I think they have the hardest job in the world mentally you have to be one of the toughest players on the pitch because you have to be ready for moments and opportunities like this you see Siler tripping up Sydney LaRue we've had the one yellow card and now we'll have a second as Gabby Seiler will get another one for the Houston Dash. The first one went to Rachel Daly. Chance here for Marta and Maggie Doherty Howard. Jane Campbell aligning that three player wall. Ball sent wide by Dahl Kemper. LaRue was over on that inline, nearly able to get to that ball. Black Swans out once again, supporting their club. Orlando looking for an equalizer here as we approach the 70th minute. Headed away by Daly. Prince flicks it back and over Allie Krieger. Campbell to the near touch line and no one there for the dash as it's played into the stands. Sophie Schmidt looking like she might check in here for Houston. Krieger in the circle. 2019 was named to the NWSL best 11. Broom. 
And we have another ball on the field, but we'll have a yellow card as well. And it looks like this is gonna go to Meggie Jordy Howard. And you can just see this is shit. Oh. Looks like they might have got the wrong player. Meggie Dory Howard, a former college teammate of Gabby Seiler at the University of Florida. And Groom's quite lucky not to have broken her leg there. Just how that had hit, planted foot, cleats in. Lucky to get a yellow card here. And I think you alluded to a, the wrong player. It looked like player. it was on Amy Turner and that it, was coming in on the hard challenge. And now here, Sophie Schmidt will come in for Shea Groom. Shea Groom, well, you see her covering her face there, maybe wiping some of that sweat off. She's had a, a rough night in the first half. She had a hard collision, and there on that hard challenge. Groom also coming off more probably because she does have four yellow cards on the season. So James Clarkson hoping to hold on to her as well for their next game, which will be Friday against Chicago. And this is that depth that, depth that I was talking about with the Houston Dash, bringing in a Olympic gold medalist off the bench in, in for a groom that had a really good 70 minute performance. McLernan on the far touch line. That one off the left boot of Jasmine Spencer, the former Orlando Pride member. Vigiano. Dahl Kemper will collect. Houston Dash looking for their seventh win of the season if the score is to hold. Turner will relay it back to McLeod. McLeod coming in the near side. If you're just joining us, Ashton Harris leaving moments ago with an injury, and that's why we are seeing Aaron McLeod here. Chapman. This one played out by McLernan and into the stands, and he'll hop back in. And there we have another comment from our Twitch, this time in French, saying how much of a fighter Ashton Harris is. And you talked about that moments ago as well. Hold on, Josh. Don't skip the point or the fact that you've translated the last two languages. We'll give it again to Karina there. <laughs> Have you been doing Rosetta Stone I do, know, I do know a little French, <laughs> but Karina was the first one to say that. So we're going to give it to our producer. Je m'appelle Kyle. That's all the French I know. And now Tony Presley <laughs> will come in for the pride. And you mentioned this, that a player that you thought might come on, Taylor Korniak, as Korniak will make an entrance and Phoebe McLernan will come off. And I like this substitute. I think Korniak is brilliant when she's on the pitch. Her back towards the net, her ability to drop into the pockets. Everyone talks about her height, but that's the last thing that sticks out to me for her. I think her ability on the ball, getting on the half turn, and just her ball playing ability as well. So I love this substitute coming on the pitch. Presley coming on the pitch, her distribution is second to none. She can hit a 70 yard diag, whether she's that target uh, striker, sometimes when they're, they're down a goal, they'll put her up top or they'll use her at the back like this for her distribution to knock this one up and go route one football. There's that diagonal ball you're talking about. A little bit too far ahead though. And Korniak getting her first touch, a player that has power behind that right leg. Pressy to the near side and Allie Riley. Side flag though was up against Orlando. Yeah. 
Houston when scoring first five wins on the season. Looking to add to that total here at Exploria Stadium. Lone goal tonight from Rachel Daly coming in the 10th minute. There is Daly. She'll let that one go out past the touchline. So he plays it into the stands. Houston at least working their way down the field. And then the turnover by the dash and Michelle Prince. And that will lead us to our hydration break here in Explorer Stadium. Of course, some big news here in the NWSL just being dropped earlier today as the championship has been announced November 20th. We know where it is. It's going to be in Portland, Oregon. And we know that we're on the call for that together. I think it's on the Twitch. So who do we have to pay to get us to Portland to call this match from site? Because I do not want to miss out on this. I think it's obviously a fabulous venue to be in Portland uh, in November with the fans. Doesn't matter if you're the home team, whether Portland makes it or not, um, or a visiting team. It's just such an incredible venue. So delighted for it to be in Providence Portland. Providence Park will be the destination. Tickets will go on sale soon. But Saturday, November 20th, 12 p.m. Eastern on CBS, as well as right here on Twitch. Again, this year with the playoffs, well, expanded with six teams now making you. Right now, you look at Portland sitting in that top spot. OL Reign with that draw. They're now in the second position, but you're looking at these two teams. Orlando currently in the fifth spot. Meanwhile, Houston in that eighth position, but a win tonight for the Houston Dash. They would move into the sixth position where Washington Spirit right now currently sit. Of course, Portland and Washington were supposed to play last night, but that game canceled due to COVID. We'll see when the makeup date is made. Of course, we do have another game tonight. We'll have Kansas City and North Carolina, 7 p.m. Last night, Gotham, Chicago, that one ending nil to nil, and racing Louisville and OL Reign, that one ending in a one-to-one -one draw. We had midweek action in the NWSL this week. Well, next week we'll get going on Friday as Mewis will relay this back and Campbell plays it out. Campbell originally named an alternate to the U.S. Olympic team in Tokyo, but of course when the rosters were expanded, she as well as Lynn Williams and Katarina Macario as this is headed on by Korniak and then over. Korniak nearly nodding this game up at one apiece. And this is what Orlando's been lacking in 78 minutes. It's a great ball into the box, fabulous service. And then Korniak, we hadn't seen this. We haven't seen those dynamic runs into that 18 yard box. Houston has done a very good job defensively dropping numbers back. And I said this before she came on the pitch. She adds so much into the side. Yes, the aerial battle, but it's her movement on and off the ball, getting into dangerous goal scoring positions. Cornyak last year in Germany before returning back to the Pride. Dorty Howard drives it in. Headed up, off the crossbar, and in for the goal. And Korniak and Orlando have tied it at one apiece. Well, you talk about a difference maker. You mentioned it at some point. We would see Korniak, and she has made an impact right away since subbing on for the Pride. And this is what the Pride needed. They needed someone to be a presence, whether it was in the 18-yard box or the movement. It's fabulous. She's marked. 
She's got someone in front, someone on the inside shoulder, but she's just so good with that aerial battle. Gets the power, gets the strength, nods this one off the bar. Campbell just can't get it on. She's in the right spot at the right time, but it's just the precision of this just up has a little bit of lady luck with the post, but 1-1. One, one. I said there was going to be more goals in the second half, and it took Korniak coming off the bench to add this for the Orlando Pride. For Korniak, her second goal of the year coming in the 79th minute. And one of the frustrations this year for James Clarkson has not been able to close out a team, and you see the fight there from the Orlando Pride getting the equalizer with just a little bit more than 10 minutes remaining on that goal by Korniak. You talk about a broadcaster's curse this time. <laughs> the broadcaster's nice little support for Korniak. And now Orlando looking to add to the oh! total. Oh, what a chance there by LaRue. LaRue bringing some flair and excitement on that shot attempt. And Houston needs to be careful here. What we know about the Pride is they don't give up. They have that never die mentality and it only takes a little bit of an opportunity. They will go and tell that final whistle, even if they hadn't been playing great in that attacking third. And you can see it here, Korniak coming off the bench, adding some life into this team, and Sydney LaRue having a go, having a bicycle kick in the box. This is what you want to see from these attacking players. Well, you go back to that first half, Kaylin. Orlando getting the momentum late, and now it seems to be same case, but different scenario with the goal score. Now maybe an opportunity here for Daly, but Presley playing it away. Marta in the circle. Korniak, the goal scorer, looking for LaRue. Schmidt will play it all the way back to Jane Campbell. A chance here for Houston to calm things down for at least a moment. Well, we've talked about how Houston's unbeaten in their last eight against Orlando in that time, seven wins and one draw. Chapman charging up the field, plays it to Spencer. Spencer playing it into the six, Daly heads it into the stands. And now Daly will stay on the ground for a moment as Daly the lone goal scorer for the dash tonight. That goal coming in the 10th minute. It looks like she takes a knock with her own player with Mewis in the box. Just from the header maybe, or there where Mewis falls on top yeah, of her. It, it looks as if Mewis makes the contact to the back. You can see a better angle here. She gets the head, comes through, and didn't look like any head collision on Mewis. It looked like from the header, so maybe it's just how she came off, just knocked her a little bit weary, because it didn't look as if Mewis had any contact with the head, thankfully. Concern look there from James Clarkson. See players warming up on the sideline for the Houston Dash. Rachel Daly since 2017 has led the dash in scoring. Tonight tying Kalia Watt in terms of regular season goals scored by a dash player, but overall daily across all competitions, the dash is leading scorer. Taylor Korniak with a big goal for the Orlando Pride in the 79th minute, tying this one up one apiece. Look at Taylor Korniak, drafted number three overall. As here we take a look back at that goal once again by Korniak in the pride. And it's brilliant, and it's a massive goal from Korniak laid on in this match. You can just see she's marked brilliantly. She's got a player that is touch tight, but she just wins that aerial battle, battle. She jumps to perfection, puts this one into the back of the net, but it's a big goal. If this stays 1-1, Orlando are sitting in fourth with 25 points. Obviously, I think you would, they have two games in hand with teams that are above them with North Carolina, O.L. Reign, and Portland. But this puts them in perfect playoff contention. Presley. Diagonal ball again. 
Jan Stotter. Gordy Howard, dispossessed of the ball. Schmidt, looking for Seiler. Seiler with that right foot. Well, Seiler does have two goals on the season, but that one shot right at Aaron McLeod. Trying to squeeze through two defenders, couldn't slither her way through. Schmidt out wide to Michelle Prince with a little room to work. Presley over defensively. LaRue. Marta. Switching sides. Jan Stotter at midfield. Finds Vigiano. But Vigiano can't control as Chapman will relay it back to Campbell. Now to Krieger. At midfield is Young Stotter. Down. Looking for Marta. Played up by Naughton. Vigiano. Marta lines it up. Bit more than two minutes remains in this, and then we should have a significant amount of stoppage time added on to the injury that we had to Ashton Harris here in the second half, which brought on the substitution and Aaron McLeod at goalkeeper for Orlando. Harris was able to walk off under her own power, which was great to see. Figure. That one just too far for Gunny Jonstadter. And now we should have a substitution come on for the Houston Dash. James Carson maybe looking to get this thing jump started once again. Bree Bazali will come on. And Kayla Obam will also come on for the dash as Michelle Prince will head off as well as Jasmine Spencer for Houston. And a massive shift for both of those players with Prince and Spencer. Thought they were brilliant on the day. Both added a little bit more balance to this Houston side, which I thought was lacking midweek. But then you have players that Vasali and Abam can come off the bench and add to this attacking side. It's a very different attack with these two players on the pitch, but a spark that needed because it's you can just see the work rate that Houston put into the game. Looking to close out their third game in the span of seven days. Look 
get up next for Houston Friday. They will play against Chicago. They will host that game. For Orlando, they will play Saturday. They will host Louisville here at Exploria Stadium. Bazzali, a bam at midfield. Dispossessing the ball as Korniak pops it back. Any underscore MC gonna be more right about this game being exciting. Look at Korniak finding the equalizer in the 79th minute for the Orlando Pride to knot this thing up at one apiece. for Houston they would be tied with Gotham with 22 points Gotham right now in that seventh spot in the standings Presley plays it all the way back to McLeod Krieger going over the top, looking for LaRue. Schmidt with long ball. Daly trying to get by Pressy, gets position. Daly slotting, and that one off of Krieger was looking to find Gabby Seiler there in the area. And I love this from Sophie Schmidt in the midfield. This game, 10 minutes of extra time. It's hot, it's humid, it was a four o'clock kickoff. The legs are starting to get heavy, team parts are starting to stretch. 1-1 one, one game, been very exciting. First thought, play behind this back line. Knows Presley's pace isn't her greatest attribute, and when you have Rachel Daly going 1v1 at the back, why not? Lewis. That one just flicked wide by Daly. You can see the frustration on Daly's face. And you look at Orlando Pride, really, their troubles here tonight have been on corner pieces by the Houston Dash. Plenty of time with the 10 minutes of stoppage that time that you talked about for either one of these teams to get a second goal. Gabby Seiler will come off and Nakame Gamera Stevens will come on. So Gamera Stevens out of Hawaii will enter the game. Ladies and gentlemen, substitution for Houston is at a time. Leading the game is number five, Gabby Seiler. She is replaced by number 33, Makabai Gamera Stevens. Dull Kemper. Goes out wide. Vigiano right there, but Chapman comes up now to Vizali. Vizali looking at Mewis. And you can see Houston's gone to three in the back just to add attacking presence, great overloads on the flanks with the fullback. So I love to see that they don't want to sit in. They want to be get this three points here on the road and really put pressure under uh, Orlando Pride with the remaining minutes left in this game. Schmidt. Kamara Stevens into the circle and Haley Hansen who exits. Bam, looking to get by Riley. A Riley able to touch it out of play. Taylor. Korniak being pressured by two defenders. Kamara Stevens will play it back to Alicia Chapman. Plays it out wide on the near side, headed out by Riley.
Vigiano will play it back. And Gunny Jonstadter, the player on the ground to get up, holding her forehead. You know, Gunny Jonstadter, one of the toughest players, pretty much plays every minute. Made her debut for Iceland in 2012. Spent time with Utah Royals FC before actually returning home to Iceland. Played her first game professionally in Iceland since 2011 as Kylie Strom will get ready to check in for the Orlando Pride. Gunny Unstar's teammates with Erica Timrak in Utah and she scored the first ever goal for Utah Royals FC. Orlando Pride getting a late goal in the 79th minute by Taylor Korniak after she had subbed on to the field just a few moments before. Rachel Daly with the lone goal in this one for the Houston Dash. That came in the 10th minute. Korniak goal assisted by Maggie Doherty Howard. There, James Clarkson looking on. Maybe some last minute instructions here for his players. We'll see how the Dash look to continue to push forward as they look for that second goal. Youngstarter will head off to the opposite touch line. And right now we're trying to decide if Kate Kylie Strom is gonna sub on and she will. So Maggie Doherty Howard will leave with the assist on the Corniac goal and Strom will take over. Riley playing it down the line. Chapman right there for the dash. And for Orlando, just be smart here. Last few minutes of the game, you don't need to collect all the three points. You're sitting in fourth place as we speak. So they're in that playoff position. They've played a good match here. It's been pretty even uh, for the most part with Houston and Pride. Clawed their way back into it with the sub with Korniak coming off the bench. So, again, for them, just defensively, be sound. Don't get too stretched. Have players sit in. Marta. Strom, who just checked on for Korniak. Back is a bam. Strom. Heading towards the end line. Korniak off of a bam, and it should be a corner for the Orlando Pride. Well, last time Orlando had a corner, it resulted in a goal by Taylor Korniak. Can they replicate that here in stoppage time of the second half? Tall target with aerial ability for Orlando is Tony Presley. Marta drives it in. Krieger out wide. Marta on the ground. Daly to Kamara Stevens. Cuts to her left. Looking for a bam, but right there is Allie Riley. Krieger out wide. Marta, two players ahead. And great defensive play there by Sophie Schmidt. Nice 
Nice little scoop pass from Marta. Riley, just too heavy of a touch. Bam, sitting it up front and knocked away by Strom, but right to Vizali. Korniak tracking back. Great defensive play from Korniak, and that, that, that was my point he made early on as well. Great in the offensive end, but defensively does the work, gets stuck in, breaks up play. Kamara Stevens, looking to thread this one to Daly, but right there is Presley. Becky Burley, the interim coach of the Orlando Pride. It feels like we're playing the first half of extra time. I mean, it's gone past the, the 10 minute mark. You can hear Tony Presley, is it time? So it'll be interesting to see when the officiating uh, blows this one dead. Krager plays it up and out. See Becky Burley trying to encourage her team to get back. There is the whistle to end this. A late goal by Taylor Korniak. Gets the equalizer in the 79th minute. Kaylin, your thoughts? Well-deserved point for either side. I thought moments of momentum for each team, and I thought Orlando came back and clawed their way back into this match. We saw it in the first 45 minutes. That last 10 minutes started to put a little bit of pressure on, started to get players forward. Good tactical changes from both managers. And that's why I think it is a good earned point for each of these sides. Well, each team coming up with a point as this one ends one to one as Orlando and Houston both come up with a point here tonight at Explorer Stadium when we return to highlights and stats. Walk back 90 minutes in the books between the Orlando Pride and the Houston Dash as this one ends one to one as we'll take a look back at the highlights from this one, and you go back to the first half, Houston getting things going early in the 10th minute. Yeah, they started out on the front foot coming to Orlando where Orlando haven't been good at home this season. And it's this build up play um, in the middle of the park with players like Groom and like Rachel Daly. They were brilliant. I thought Groom coming back into this lineup was kind of that puzzle, the piece of the puzzle that was missed. And then again, this attack, Terrible first touch by Riley. I thought she really struggled in this 90-minute performance. You can see her here. Turner, come through. Put your foot through this ball because I've made a bobble of a mess at this back. And Rachel Daly, that late midfield run to slot this one home to give Houston the early on lead. And Houston controlling this while substitutions remain. Cornea comes on. Comes down to man management, and I said that at the halfway mark, and it was a brilliant sub bringing Korniak off the bench, not only for her aerial presence, but I thought she was so good just getting on the half turn, getting the ball at her feet, and just allowing this pride side to stay a little bit higher up the pitch. So a well-deserved point for either side here and this afternoon. Orlando Pride, like you said, clawing their way back in as we'll take a look at the stands. And with that one point, they move up from that fifth spot and leapfrog the Chicago Red Stars. Meanwhile, Houston Dash will stay in the eighth position, tied with 22 points with Gotham. I mean, look at the standings. It's literally so close. Even racing Louisville, if they go on a little bit of a stretch here, can push to that playoff spot. So obviously Kansas City playing here tonight, three points would be crucial for them just to keep their hope alive a little bit. But the middle of the group, other than Portland that is running away with this at the moment, 
I mean, it's really anyone to push for this playoff spot, and what an exciting moment for the NWSL. It's really going to come down to the final weeks to see who's in those playoffs. Seven points separates second spot from eighth spot where the Houston Dash sit for Orlando. Up next for them, they will play Saturday. They will host Race in Louisville. That will be at 7 p.m. Meanwhile, the Dash, they will play Friday. That will be against Chicago. That game will be at 7.30. All points matter moving forward, especially for both these two teams as they look to solidify a spot in the playoffs as this one ends one to one, but still more NWSL action on Twitch as Kansas City will host North Carolina Courage for our crew. For Kaylin Kyle, I'm Josh Toll. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again very soon.